In this video, we'll introduce the framework known as Universal Design for Learning, or UDL. We'll first see how Universal Design has been applied outside of the teaching and learning environment, and then how UDL arose from that original concept of Universal Design. Next, we'll discuss how using UDL to design your course creates more accessible, equitable, and inclusive learning environments. Last, we'll briefly touch on the three UDL guidelines. Other videos will delve into each of these guidelines in more depth. UDL grew out of a broader universal design concept, which can be summed up as design that removes potential barriers that exist due perhaps to a disability or situation outside of the norm, but recognizing that designing with fewer barriers can benefit all. The benefits are universal. Take, for example, a curb cutout. Removing the barrier of the curb is necessary for people using mobility aids like wheelchairs, but many people benefit like those pushing a stroller or a grocery cart or riding a bike. Another example is a talking meat thermometer. This is necessary for people whose limited vision makes it hard to read the numbers, but this design can benefit anyone, since you might have to position the thermometer at an angle that makes it hard to read. A third example is OXO Good Grips kitchen utensils. This type of handle is necessary and was originally designed for people who have arthritis or otherwise have a hard time gripping small items. But it's beneficial for everyone since it's just more comfortable and easier to hold. Universal design is based on the idea that if you design with the extremes of a continuum in mind, then more people will be able to use what you've designed. And it's possible that even those in the center of the continuum will benefit. Let's take this into the digital environment. Here's one application of necessary for some and beneficial for all to teaching and learning. Captions on a video are necessary for learners who are hard of hearing or deaf. These are the learners on the extremes of the continuum of hearing ability. But all learners may benefit from captions, for example, when the speaker has an unfamiliar accent or isn't speaking loudly or articulating well, captions can help the viewer understand what's being said. If the video is not in the viewer's first language, reading captions can help them understand. If the, if the viewer is in a loud setting or can't turn the sound on for some reason, then they can turn on the captions. And if the vocabulary is unfamiliar or the content is complicated, reading captions helps to process the information. Cast.org the leading organization promoting UDL says that UDL principles guide design of learning environments with a deep understanding and appreciation for individual variability in our classrooms. As we've alluded to, one aspect of individual variability is the disability spectrum. So let's talk a little bit about the spectra of disabilities our students live with. Here are some of the statistics for the fall of 2022 about the breakdown of disabilities for the 1,845 registered students at NC State University. The largest numbers on this table are for mental health and ADD and ADHD. Interestingly, the accommodation most often required by students is extra time to complete assessments and assignments. What would it look like if we designed our courses proactively for the extremes, building in more flexible deadlines and untimed assessments? Would every student benefit? Here's another way to think about the importance of proactively considering making a course more accessible. We know that students get, can get registered with the Disability Resource Office and request accommodations, but how many students with disabilities do this? In this 2020 survey of students with disabilities, a full 54% of students with disabilities were not receiving accommodations. 49% were not even on the radar of their university's Disability Service Office at all. UDL does not just support accessibility. It also makes for more equitable teaching overall. One definition of equity is removing barriers to equal opportunity as by providing support based on unique needs. Now, having a disability can certainly create unique needs for a learner, so accessibility is one part of equity. But learners have unique needs due to lots of different identities they hold and backgrounds they come from. One size does not fit all. And UDL can make for a more inclusive learning environment. As we dig into the principles a little bit, we'll see how demographic groups that have historically been excluded can, through UDL principles, feel like their interests, their values, their stories, and their perspectives have a place in the college classroom. So how do we apply UDL when we design or improve the design of our courses? It can be pretty overwhelming to think you have to redesign an entire course, and that's not necessarily the best approach or the best way to spend your time. The plus one approach presented in the book, Reach Everyone, Teach Everyone by Thomas Tobin and Kristen Belling, suggests that a better way to start applying UDL guidelines is to identify the pinch points in your course. That means consider where do your students struggle? Where do they not engage? 
And then consider possible barriers to their success or engagement that could be removed by using universal design for learning. The UDL guidelines developed by CAS.org categorize three different ways to apply UDL. UDL is ultimately about offering flexibility and choice. If we're rigid or we provide just one acceptable way to do something in a course, we're naturally going to have more barriers to success for some students. By designing with flexibility, options and alternatives in terms of how students can engage, how you represent the content, and how students can express themselves and approach their learning, you're going to widen the doorway to success. Since students are not all alike, providing multiple ways that they can engage can make it more possible for all students to engage fully. Some learners are excited by spontaneity, others like your routine, some like novelty, others are sort of scared away by that. Some are ready to share their thoughts immediately and publicly, and others want to think it over, and, be, and they're more careful about how they share their thoughts. And also to engage, students need to be interested and curious. We can promote interest and curiosity by optimizing individual choice and autonomy, optimizing relevance, value, and authenticity, and minimizing threats and distractions. What seems relevant and valuable to your learners is going to vary based on their identities and abilities. What seems threatening and distracting to them is also going to vary because your learners are diverse. UDL prompts us to give students multiple entry points and ways to take ownership of their learning so it's more interesting and meaningful to them. When we talk about providing multiple means of representation, we're talking about recognizing that learners differ in how they perceive and comprehend information. This can be based on sensory disabilities, learning disabilities, language differences, cultural differences, and more. Presenting a piece of content or a concept in multiple ways can make it more possible that all students can fully access the content. When we consider perception, UDL looks a lot like digital accessibility. We want to ensure learners can customize the display of content and that access to content does not rely on just one sense, like hearing or seeing. When we consider language, symbols, and comprehension, the UDL guidelines recognize that not all learners come to the course with the same background knowledge, the same cultural ways of knowing, and the same language skills. So we want to clarify vocabulary and symbols and illustrate things through multiple media. UDL prompts us to present our content in multiple ways so that learners are not left behind because they can't perceive or comprehend it in one way that it's presented. We can supply links to background knowledge. We can highlight patterns and big ideas. When we talk about providing multiple means of action and expression, we're talking about recognizing that learners differ in how they navigate their learning environment and in how they express what they know. For example, organization abilities differ, they approach tasks differently, and these types of differences should not determine their ability to succeed. Providing multiple ways for students to take action or express what they know means that more students can fully perform in your course. Many times we think of this principle enacted by offering a variety of types of assessments. That might mean not having the only type of assessment in your course be a multiple choice exam, or it might mean accepting either a paper, a presentation, a video, or an infographic as a means of assessing a student's knowledge. Now that you have a brief overview of UDL, you might identify those pinch points in your course and consider if providing multiple means for engagement, multiple ways of representing content, or multiple ways for students to take action and express what they know might relieve some of these pain points. Other videos in this series will offer detail on each of these guidelines.